Hey, welcome to Simple Church Online. If this is the first time you've tuned in, thank you for joining us. We hope and pray that you will connect with us again right here at Simple Church Online. Last week, we kicked off a new series that we're calling Responding to 2020 and Beyond. We kicked it off by saying there's a whole lot of stuff that has happened in 2020, and there's still a whole lot of stuff that's happening right now. There are things that have happened that have affected us collectively, and there are things that have affected you as an individual. And responding the right way, responding the way that God wants us to, to all of these things that we face in life, often seems like an uphill battle. Many times it seems like we're climbing this huge mountain. But here's the deal, guys. We serve a God who can not only climb any mountain, Scripture tells us that He can actually remove mountains, that He can make a way where there seems to be no way. We took a look at a scripture in Proverbs that was written by Solomon. A scripture we said that if you would commit to memory and if you would run all of your decisions through, that it would help you be better at life. It will help you live a life with fewer regrets. And it will help you present a better view of who Jesus really is to anyone who is looking at you or to you. Here's what that scripture said in Proverbs 27, 12. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and they pay the penalty. A prudent person, he's saying, stops because they see danger up ahead. They take refuge. They think. They pray. They come up with a plan. But the simple-minded, the naive person just says, you know what, I'm just going to keep going anyway. And they pay the price. They don't learn to live beyond today. And why is it so important? Well, listen, it's because of this principle that none of us can escape. Our decisions determine the direction and the quality of our lives. They do. It's true for all of us. And last week, we uncovered the fact that sometimes in life, we end up in certain situations or certain predicaments because of someone else's decisions. However, we have to respond. And our response, well, our response, it's a decision. So our decisions and responses really do determine the direction and the quality of our lives. And there is a way, there's a way that you and I can make better decisions. And it's by asking better questions. Questions that can keep us from opting for the immediate over what the future holds. Now that we're all caught up on what we looked at last week, let's sing a few songs and then I'll be back with part two of Responding to 2020 and Beyond. There is a sound I love to hear is the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises he
forget Put that hunger in your heart Put that fire in your soul Love is the reason To keep on believing When you feel like giving up When you feel like giving in Cause love is the reason To keep on believing If we could pull back The curtain of heaven We would see his hand
favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children and their children There is a way that you and I can make better decisions, and it's by asking better questions before we make a decision. Questions that can keep us, keep us from opting for right now, the immediate, over what the future holds. There's this voice in all of our heads that always wants us to, to act fast and to act right now. It's kind of like that creepy used car salesman. But we have to learn to look into the future. And we have to stop blaming other people for our bad choices and our bad decisions. Because truth be told, there was only one person there. There was only one person present for every single one of your bad decisions. And that was you, my friend. It was the man in the mirror. So, if you ask yourselves good questions and answer them honestly before you make any decisions, you will become a prudent person, a person who will be able to see danger up ahead, that will see danger lurking. And like we said last week, this is important because it will allow you to live a life with fewer regrets. It will be, you will not only make yourself better, but you will make the people better who look for you and look to you. How, how many of you would ever go into business with a pathological liar. Anybody out there? No, nobody would do that. I mean, none of us would even go into business with someone who just has this habit of telling a lie three or four times a week. But so often, so often, we lie to ourselves and we deceive ourselves and we try to justify it. And you know what that does? It eats away at our credibility, our credibility with ourselves. So we have to get honest with ourselves so that we aren't at odds with ourselves so that we can make better decisions. Listen, some of you know this to be true. Rigorous, rigorous honesty is the first rule to recovery. You need to tell yourself the truth even if it makes you feel bad about yourself because you can't get where you need to be until you're honest about where you are at. So listen, here is a great question, I mean a great question, to ask yourself before making a decision, before responding to someone or to something. You ready? Here it is. Am I being honest with myself, really? Am I being honest with myself, really? And then you need to be honest with your answer. I mean, you owe it to yourself to be honest with yourself. You need to ask yourself, why am I doing this, really? Why, why am I avoiding him, or why am I avoiding her, really? Why am I making the decision to move in, really? Why am I quitting my job, really? Why am I mad? Why am I so mad at him or so mad at her, really? Why, why do I keep making all of these excuses, Really, really, why do I? 
Why do I keep putting that off? Really? Why did I say yes? Really? Why did I purchase that? Really? Why won't I get help? Really? The reason we have to add that really is because, listen, you are a good salesperson at selling a bad idea to yourself. You may not be able to sell anything to anyone else, but you can sell yourself a ketchup popsicle on a hot July day. And you know this to be true because your greatest regrets, your greatest regrets are associated with things and people and opportunities that you sold yourself on. I mean, think back to the last bad relationship you had. The one that you you had that little messed up feeling inside. It, it was messing with you enough that you, you asked your mama some questions and she tried to warn you. And your besties, they tried to warn you. And you assured everyone, you know what? It's under control. I got it. I, I, I've seen that, but, but I've, got, I've got it all under control. None of them bought it. But you sold yourself on that lie. And then it hit the fan. It fell apart. And you are still dealing with some of the consequences. You look back now and say, what in the world was I thinking? And that's the issue. You weren't thinking. You were selling. You were selling yourself on a bad decision. And the same is true on your last bad purchase. Once you got it in your hands, Man, once you got it in your hands, it was over. You bought it. And then 20 or 30 minutes later, you started regretting it. It was like like something took over. And when you got it in your hands, you you had to have it. You had to get it. And, And that something that felt like it took over, that something did take over. That something is that salesperson inside of you. That salesperson that says, act now, act fast. Don't think about the future. Don't miss this deal. It's a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Listen, you have to learn to hit pause as soon as you start selling yourself on something. Hit pause. Because, listen, you very rarely have to sell yourself on a good idea. I mean, think about it. Be honest with yourself and tell yourself the unfiltered truth. Truth sheds light, and that light will help illuminate the correct path, the one that you need to be on, the one that gets you to where you need to be. Now listen, this is not easy because when we want something, I mean, think about this, it's true for all of us. When we want something, we can make just about anything support our decision to go get it or to do it. And we can also reject anything that doesn't support it or doesn't support us getting it. Think back to a bad decision that now in hindsight seems so crystal clear that you made the wrong decision. But when you were in the moment, it was like you it was like you couldn't think clearly. I mean, you wanted it so bad, you just, you couldn't think clearly. Yes, that, that happened. And no, you're not crazy. Human beings have been dealing with this problem for centuries. As a matter of fact, around 6,000 B.C., Jeremiah, the author of the Old Testament book, Jeremiah, he served as an advisor, as a coach, if you will, to several Judean kings. These kings who he advised, if they would have just listened to him, they would have not only had a longer rule, they would have had longer lives. They would have had more pleasant lives, more success in their lives. They would have had way less regrets had they just taken Jeremiah's advice, but they didn't. The first king that Jeremiah was an advisor for was a young king. He was actually in his teens when he took the throne. When he became king, his kingdom, Judah, had been paying tribute to, or a bunch of money, to Babylon for their military assistance and protection whenever needed. They were still allowed to run and manage their own kingdom and day-to-day business, but they got protection from Babylon. This annual fee was very high. So after a few years, the young king decided, you know what? I'm not going to pay that any longer. I'm just not going to do it. And he declared loyalty to Babylon's arch rival, Egypt. 
Jeremiah tried to talk the young king out of this decision. He explained that the cons, they outweighed the pros. I mean, this was not a good decision. He even explained how dangerous this was, and he tried to get the king to realize that his pride was getting in the way. Jeremiah even went as far to explain that this decision was in opposition to God's plan and God's will for the people. And still, the young king did what a lot of young kings did. He didn't listen. He did whatever he wanted because he was the king. And exactly what Jeremiah predicted, exactly what Jeremiah prophesied, exactly what he said, well, it happened. The wicked king Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon attacked Judah, destroyed the city, and kidnapped the young king to be a part of his king collection. This wicked king Nebuchadnezzar had a king collection, and any time he would overthrow a city, overthrow a kingdom, he would kidnap the king, and he would make sure that he was alive, and he would take him back to Babylon, and he would make a prisoner of him. And oftentimes he would march these kings around just to show his power and just to flex. The next king, who wicked Nebuchadnezzar appoints over Judah, takes over. And it happens to be that he's very young also. He doesn't listen to Jeremiah. And then all of a sudden, in just a matter of months, King Nebuchadnezzar shows up again. And he gets him and takes him for his king collection. Then a third king is appointed. And guess what? He doesn't listen to Jeremiah's sound advice either. This time, before the wicked king Nebuchadnezzar returns to wreak havoc, since the third new king won't listen, Jeremiah takes it to the streets, and he's warning the people and telling them what's going to happen, and he's saying this time it's going to be worse, worse than ever. So the third king has Jeremiah taken into custody, and he throws him into a dry cistern, Scripture says, just to keep him quiet. And now, King Nebuchadnezzar just decides, you know what? Judah isn't worthy of their own king. We're just going to take over. You can read all about this in 2 Chronicles 36. It's, it's crazy. And then just as Jeremiah had predicted, Nebuchadnezzar shows up on the scene, and this third young king runs to Jeremiah and says, Please, Jeremiah, pray to God. Ask him to forgive us. Ask him to get us out of this mess. And Jeremiah says, Well, listen, he will forgive you, but you know what? It's too late for you to get out of the mess. You have made too many bad decisions. So the king flees the city, but he's later captured. He's tortured. He's blinded. And you guessed it. He's made a part of the wicked king Nebuchadnezzar's collection. Now, here's the deal. When you hear a story like this or you watch something like this play out and unfold, it's so easy to say, well, well, what in the world were those young kings thinking? I mean, I understand the first king, okay, and, 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 and I get it. He was young. He wanted to do his own thing. Maybe you can even excuse the second young king for not listening to Jeremiah, who was totally right about everything he said to the first king. But man, by the time the third dude rolls around, we're thinking, come on. It's so blindingly obvious by now that if you don't listen to the wise advice, the wise counsel of Jeremiah, you are going to be doomed. I mean, the handwriting is on the wall. What's going on? Listen, you've observed people you love make bad decisions after you and other people that love them warned them, warned them of the danger up ahead, haven't you? And guess what? You, you and I, we've made some bad decisions when we were warned of danger up ahead. So what's going on here? Well, Jeremiah, the wise prophet, left us with some words of wisdom. He actually tells us why we're so good at deceiving ourselves and making bad decisions. Look what he wrote in Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, verse 9. He says, the heart is deceitful above all things. Did you hear that? The heart is deceitful above all things. Your heart is deceitful above everything else. It's deceitful. He doesn't say it's dishonest. He says it's deceitful. And here's the deal. Dishonesty? Dishonesty is easy to spot from a mile away, right? I mean, you're either honest or dishonest. There's nothing in between. But deceitful. Deceitful, it's not always easy to recognize because deceitful has a little bit of truth mixed in. It has a little bit of untruth. It has a little exaggeration. It has a few facts. Deceitful is not easy to detect. 
and your heart and my heart, according to Jeremiah, it's deceitful. And this explains why there are times that we are just so convinced and so convincing because our hearts, they're dangerous. We don't merely lie to ourselves. We actually deceive ourselves at times. Once our hearts get wrapped around something we want, it's like it says to the brain, okay, brain, I'm the heart and I want this, so figure out a way how I can get this. And the brain responds by going, well, well you don't really need it. You just want it. So I guess I'll figure out a way to make you think you need it. And then it's game on. Because if we convince ourselves we need something versus just want something or want someone, man, you can bet we will figure out a way to justify getting it or getting them. We have fallen victim to this so many times, it's crazy. Once we are convinced we need something, it becomes so easy for that salesperson on the inside of us to just sell us. And then the reasons, guys, the reasons we use to sell ourselves, they're not even reasons. They're justifications. We do this to ourselves because of what Jeremiah said. Our hearts are deceitful. Now, Jeremiah has more to say. Look at this. He says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. He says, guys, our hearts are deceitful and there is no cure. This is permanent. So thanks for tuning in to Simple Church Online today. Good luck with the rest of your life. No, no, wait, there's more. Look at this. He says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Okay, maybe we are finished. Maybe we are doomed, right? No, no, listen. There may be some hope. As a matter of fact, I know there is some hope. Our heart is deceitful, and it is beyond cure. But that question, who can understand it? That is a great question. I know I can't understand it, and I doubt you can understand it. Listen, I've worked with people over 30 years in ministry. I mean, 30 years of my life I've spent working with people, talking to people, giving advice. I look at so many decisions that people made that I've known, and I can't understand why in the world they would ever have made those decisions. But it's deeper than that. I look at my own life, and I don't understand some of the decisions I've made in my life. Who can understand it. Apparently, no one. And this explains why somewhere along the way, we have all made this statement. I don't understand why I did what I just did. I don't understand why I did what I just did. Or I don't understand why I decided what I decided. We say that and we genuinely mean it. I mean, this explains why you and I do the exact things that we advise other people not to do. It's because the person in the mirror, he or she, won't tell us the truth. They never will unless we force them to. This is why you have to ask yourselves before making a decision, are you being honest with yourself? Really? Are you being honest with yourself? Really? The sooner we accept this fact, the sooner we'll become open to advice that conflicts with our hearts. The more cautious we will become when our sales voice starts pitching things to us. And if you and I, before we make a decision, would just start having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with ourselves, if we would just ask ourselves, are you being honest with yourself, really? And then, if we would tell ourselves the truth, even if it hurts us, this one step will be a game changer for us. It will allow you and I to live a life with fewer regrets. It'll make us better at life. And for those of us who are Christ followers, it will help the people who are looking at us and looking to us. It will help them get a better look at what a Jesus follower really looks like. It will help them get a clearer picture of Jesus. Because guys, listen, our choices, our responses, our decisions, 
Our decisions, both good and bad, affect way more people than just us. So while this message may seem so very practical, I promise you it is very, very, very spiritual. And remember, it really is what love requires of us. Love requires that as Christ followers that we make good decisions. Some of you today, you need to stop and hit pause and you need to ask yourself some questions and then you need to honestly answer them. Some of you need to stop and ask yourself, why do I continue to go out with him? Or why do I continue to go out with her? Really? Some of you need to stop today and say, you know, why am I about to file for divorce? Really? Why am I about to take that job? Or why am I about to quit this job? Really? Why do I not talk to my adult children? Really? Why have I been straying away from my faith? Really? Why haven't I spoken to my mom or my dad in years? Really? Why am I about to make that huge purchase? Really? And then tell yourself the unfiltered truth. And listen, let's be honest. It's terrifying, isn't it? It is terrifying to tell ourselves the unfiltered truth. I know it's not easy, but I also know when we do, it's very freeing and it's very liberating. And I know it will make your life better and it will make you better at life. What Jeremiah said is true. The heart, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. But now you know that. You know it. And if something is permanent, here's what that means. If something's permanent, it needs constant supervision, constant attention, constant care. So listen, supervise your heart. Care for it. Supervise it and care for it enough to tell it the truth, even when the truth hurts you. Be prudent because you will be better. And the people who love you the most, they will be better. And the people who are looking at you and to you, they will be better. And they will get a better view of Christ. They will better understand the love of God. Be prudent. Be a prudent person. Let's pray. God, I pray that you would help each of us to become a prudent person. Someone who can see danger up ahead. God, I pray that we would be honest with ourselves, that we would ask ourselves the question, am I being honest? Really? And then we would, I pray that we would have the guts to tell ourselves the unfiltered truth, even when it hurts. Because God, we want to be better at life and we want life to get better. It's in your name we pray, amen. Listen, I believe this with my whole heart that God has a plan and a purpose for each of us. And I also believe one decision at a time, we get closer to that plan, closer to that purpose. It is so important, guys, to make good choices and good decisions. And it doesn't only affect you, it affects tons of other people. I hope and pray that you won't just walk away from this message today. I hope you won't just walk away and put it on the shelf. I pray that you would do your best to put it into practice. Thank you again for tuning in to Simple Church today. I look forward to connecting with you again next Sunday right here online. If you'd like to make a donation to Simple Church, well, we've made it very simple. Just go to our webpage at simplechurchstl.com, hit the donate button and follow the directions, or you can mail your check into the church. You can find that address on the webpage. Thanks for tuning in today. And listen, be a prudent person. Make wise choices and wise decisions. Be honest with yourself. We can do this, guys. God bless.